Here is the first partial equilibrium uh, model, and so this model is very simple. So why is um, such a simplicity? This is because, in fact, of course, this is the first model that you are going to work on, and so I don't want to start with something difficult. And the second reason is that I want to focus on uh, the structure of the programming, because in all uh, models that we are going to present during this curriculum, either partial equilibrium or general equilibrium models, uh, the structure is exactly the same. So during the, the two curricula that you are going to follow during uh, this year, uh, you will work on two types of economic models. Uh, the first type of economic models is partial equilibrium model. Um, so it means that um, it's relatively simple as compared to general equilibrium models in the sense that we do not take into account all markets and all interdependencies existing in economic activity. So for example, if we study the rice uh, sector, we do not consider what's uh, happening on the labor market or, or the land market. Uh, so we uniquely study what's happening on the, the rice sector. Okay, And so we neglect uh, a certain number of interdependencies in the economy. But the general equilibrium model, so we, we do not keep these uh, assumptions and we uh, uh, take into account all markets and all interdependencies. So, for example, if we study the rice sector, we, um, of course, we study how what's happening on the rice sector affects the rest of the economy and in particular the labor markets, the, the land market. And so it modifies the equilibrium on these markets. And when equilibrium on labor market and land markets are, are modified, we, we also study uh, the feedback effect on, on the rice market. So everything is taken into account in a general equilibrium model. So let us focus now on partial equilibrium models. So what we study, the object of uh, the study is um, a sector. It may be two sectors with uh, an economic relationship um, and these two sectors may be in one country or maybe we can consider to study one sector or two sectors uh, all over the world. So the, the question is that it's not a matter of size. Um, it's, a, it's a matter of economic assumptions. Uh, and these assumptions uh, imply that a certain number of markets and interdependence are neglected. In particular, uh, we consider that uh, consumers' income is constant, uh, prices of productive factors uh, are constant, and so on. So let us uh, consider the, the, the simplest design of a partial equilibrium model. So this is uh, one sector in one country. And uh, I take the example of rice in Senegal. Um, so, uh, so this is the our object of uh, study. So if we consider the plane, consisting of a uh, quantity on the horizontal axis uh, and the units are tons of rice and the vertical axis uh, which is the price of a ton of rice and we can uh, consider that the monetary unit is franc CFA or whatever US dollar or euros but I consider here franc CFA so if you ask yourself what is the factors determining the production of rice, uh, you may think, and I think it's uh, uh, right, uh, you may think that the production of rice uh, depends on its price, of course, but also on price of uh, many inputs. And so it depends on the price of land, the price of machines, the price of fertilizers, and so on. So 
what we suppose in partial equilibrium is that the prices of these inputs are constant. Okay, so this is the, the, the assumptions uh, characterizing partial equilibrium model. And so we can focus on the relationship between supply and price. And here I'm going to consider that supply increases with price and this reflects increasing marginal costs. So let us consider now demand. Uh, we are still uh, studying the sector of rice in Senegal. So if you ask yourself what, is, uh, what are the factors determining the demand of rice, well, of course, it, demand, it depends on the price of rice, but it depends also on consumers' income and on the prices of all goods, and in particular, the prices of other cereals that can be substitutes of rice. Um, so what we suppose in partial equilibrium, and this is the key assumption of partial equilibrium models, we suppose that incomes and other prices are constant. And so we can focus on uh, the relationship between uh, the demand of rice and its price. Here I uh, assume that uh, demand decreases with price which reflects uh, decreasing marginal utility. So let us now see what are the relationship between Senegal and the rest of the world um, in, the, in the sector of rice. Um, so what we suppose is that um, Senegal imports rice from the rest of the world. So what is the reason uh, of this uh, status of importing? Well, um, in fact, uh, if we consider the world price of rice, which we call PE, uh, and it is a world price of rice uh, with uh, inclusion of uh, the cost of insurance and freight, uh, so this uh, price is under the autarky price which is uh, the price resulting from the intersections of local demand and local supply. So uh, the reason behind that is the fact that maybe demand is uh, very strong in Senegal or maybe supply is uncompetitive, but uh, this is a fact. PE is under the autarky price and under free trade, Senegal imports rice from the rest of the world. What we suppose is that uh, rice from Senegal and rice from the rest of the world are identical goods. Uh, these are exactly the same uh, goods, and so it means that uh, the substitution in perfect is perfect in consumption. That is to say, local consumers substitute rice from the rest of the world perfectly to uh, local rice and uh, the, the, the rice which is produced locally is exactly the same as the, the rice imported from the rest of the world. And so the consequence of that is that there is a unique price of rice in Senegal because we have a, a, a unique good. Uh, so another assumption would be to consider that rice from Senegal is differentiated as compared to rice from the rest of the world, we would have two goods and two prices. But here this is not the case and we have a unique price of rice and we'll see uh, soon how to change this assumption. Uh, so Senegal uh, apply, uh, applies a, a, an import duty on the importation of rice from the rest of the world and even under this import duty uh, Senegal imports rice, okay? So uh, this import duty is uh, defined in percentage. So this is an ad valorem import duty. And so the local price of rice is P, which is equal to PE, the world price, multiplied by one plus T, which is the ad valorem import duty. So, um, the assumptions that we make is that whatever the quantity of rice imported is, 
the world price is constant. That is to say, the world supply of rice is infinitely elastic. So it means that whatever the imports are, the world price uh, will remain the same. Okay, because Senegal is too small to change the, the world price of rice. We will see soon how to change this assumption. So if we look at uh, the consequences of the applications of this import duty, uh, first, we can say that local price is augmented. Second, we can say that uh, supply is augmented from X to X prime. Uh, and second, uh, and finally, we can say that uh, consumption is reduced from D to D prime. Uh, and so this is because local price is increased and so consumption is uh, decreased. So let us remind the basics of partial equilibrium models. Uh, so we designed a model uh, adapted to a specific sector or maybe two or three sectors uh, related by um, a specific economic uh, interconnection. And um, maybe this is worldwide or specific to a country. But the, the most important point is that we do not uh, take into account the equilibrium on all markets. And so we think everything else be, being constant. Okay, so that's uh, the, the very basics of partial equilibrium models. And so in particular, we suppose that there are other prices which are constant. Uh, maybe it's uh, prices of productive factors or prices of, of substitutes, uh, complements, but there are other prices that we suppose uh, are constant. And uh, the same for consumers' income. Uh, we suppose that consumers' income is constant. So um, let us try now to um, write the mathematical model. Uh, so we are going to uh, specify uh, a few equations, but we need first uh, some symbols, some marks, some notation. So we call XS the supply of rice in Senegal, XD the demand of rice in Senegal, P is the local price of rice in Senegal, PE is the world price of rice, MD is uh, the import demand of rice by Senegal, so it means that it is uh, the quantity of rice that Senegal is willing to import, and MS is uh, the import supply by the rest of the world, uh, which means uh, this is the, what the world is willing to export to Senegal. So let us write uh, right now the, the model. So the model consists in uh, six equations. Uh, so the first equation is uh, a supply function. Uh, it is P is equal to AXS plus B. So it's uh, relations between uh, the local price and uh, the supply, uh, the local supply. And uh, the, the, this, um, the functional form is a linear uh, relation. Uh, you remember the graph. The second relation is the demand function. So it is P is equal to minus C multiplied by XD plus D. And so it's a relation between a linear relations between P, uh, the local price, and the local demand XD. Uh, the third uh, equation is the definitions of import demand. So it's excess demand. So it is uh, uh, MD is equal to XD minus XS, the uh, demand minus uh, supply. The fourth equation is um, what we call the small country uh, assumptions, which means that Senegal is uh, too small to affect the, the world market, so it means that the, the world price of rice is constant, whatever the quantity of imports demanded by Senegal is. So it's PE is equal to PE0, PE being a variable, but PE0 being a, a parameter. 
Um, so we will call it, in fact, an exogenous variable. So it means that um, it cannot vary within the model. It is the modeler that decide exogenously to the, to the model to change this uh, value of PE0. The fifth equation is uh, MD is equal to MS, so its import demand is equal to import supply. Um, the sixth equation is P is equal to PE multiplied by 1 uh, plus T, so it is uh, the relation between local price and world price, and uh, the gap between uh, these two prices consists in the ad valorem duty imposed by the, uh, the government of Senegal. Um, of course, A, B, C and D are uh, positive constants. So we've got a partial equilibrium model with six equations. So we have to figure out uh, the number of uh, endogenous variables, that is to say variables which are determined by the model. I'm not talking about exogenous variables uh, which are uh, of, of which the value is selected by uh, the modeler. So the number of endogenous variables, so excess, supply of rice in Senegal, XD, demand of rice in Senegal, P, local price of rice in Senegal, PE, the world price of rice, MD, the import demand of Senegal, MS, the import supply by the rest of the world. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six under genus variables. So it's okay because we've got six equations, six under genus variables. The system is neither overdetermined nor underdetermined. So it's a square system and we can find a feasible solution. So uh, I would like to explain one important point. So we've got some flexibility here because we can reduce the number of equations and the number of variables. We could also uh, augment the number of equations and the number of variables. And in fact, we would have exactly the same model. I'm trying to explain my point. Um, so, for example, we can remove equation PE is equal to PE0 and replace uh, the endogenous variable PE by the parameter PE0 everywhere. Um, so it would mean that we've got a system of five equations and five unknowns, uh, five endogenous variables. So it means that we would have exactly the same uh, model. Uh, and in particular, we would have the assumption of a small country with a constant uh, world price. Uh, so the number of equations and the number of endogenous variables is flexible. Another illustration is uh, M. Uh, it's possible to keep only M in place of MD and MS and remove equation 5, uh, which is MD is equal to MS we would have so a system of uh, four equations and four unknowns, four endogenous variables. So you see that we would have a very simple model uh, with only five equations and five endogenous variables and nothing new. Uh, it would be exactly the same, the same model. So it's uh, here we can keep six equations and six via endogenous variables because the number uh, of uh, equations is uh, very, very small, so it's not a problem. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that if you want to change a model, if you want to add new variables, new assumptions, you have to augment the number of variables, endogenous variables, but you have also to augment a, a, in a similar way the number of equations. Now we can do uh, an exercise which is quite interesting. It's not mandatory, but I think it's worth trying to do this exercise. Why? Because first, it will be in fact necessary to have this kind of uh, thing when we will do uh, MCP programming. Uh, and second, because it helps us to uh, understand the, the model. And third, um, it will be very helpful if we want to add 
uh, new equations and new variables. So what is this exercise? It's simply that we can match each equation to a variable. Putting differently, we can uh, in fact uh, allocate each equation to the determinations of a specific variable. So here we have six equations and six endogenous variables. So I can allocate each equation to the determinations of uh, one variable. So for example, equation one, uh, of course, it determines uh, the supply, xs, uh, because this is the supply function. Second, equation two, this is uh, the demand function, so it is uh, determinations of xd. Uh, equation three, uh, this is the definition of uh, import demand, because it's excess demand, local demand minus uh, local supply, so MD uh, is determined by equation 3. Equation 4, well, it determines uh, the world price, uh, because uh, it says that the world price is constant at a level which is uh, PE0. Equation 5, um, in fact, you have uh, MD is equal to MS, MD is determined in another equation, so it determines MS. And equation 6, well, you've got P, which is equal to the world price multiplied by 1 plus the ad valorem duty, so it determines the local price P. We can have a slightly different interpretations because if you look at equation 5, it says uh, uh, MD is equal to MS, so its demand is equal to supply, okay? When you have this type of equation, we can say that it is matched to the determinations of a price. And here, of course, as it is import demand and import supply, it can be, in fact, the determinations of the world price, okay? But, of course, the world price is determined by equation 4. So a different interpretations would be, well, equation 5, MD is equal to MS, determines PE, and equation 4, PE is equal to PE0, determines MS. Okay, so this is possible. I accept the first interpretation here, and um, I think that equation 4 determines PE and equation 5 determines MS. But what you have to keep in mind is the fact that an equation supply is equal to demand may be matched to a price. So it's very interesting because, in fact, you don't have uh, the variable which is determined by these equations in the equation. And even if you have that, you have uh, these equations that determine the price. Okay, so right now we are going to program the first model. Uh, so this is the model that we have just exposed, and I would like to start with uh, an explanation of the structure of a program. In a GAMS file, there is a specific order of instruction. But of course, uh, you have to work first on the model. So for example, the six equations that we have just designed, and the identifications of this, the six variables uh, endogenously explained by the model. Uh, you have to start systematically with uh, this stage because it's the most important stage of, uh, in the design of a model. Uh, then you see when you write a model that you must define some sets define some parameters that you have to enter some data and you have also to conduct what we call the calibrations and of course you have to initialize the model so in a gams file this is uh, the first stage the first instructions that have to be written but you have to in fact make this stage when you on a sheet of paper for example when you, you have uh, first designed the model. And then you have the definitions of the model. So it's a very simple instruction. Once you have written all the equation, you have to apply a shock and you have to display the results. So uh, right now let us present the structure of a program. So in a GAMS file, 
we start with a series of instructions which consists in the definition of sets, definitions of parameters, the data entry, and the calibration. Okay? Why? Because in fact, we are going to use the sets to use the parameters after that. And of course, GAMS would not understand if we use a parameter that is not already defined or declared. We cannot use a, a set if we do not declare this set uh, before. So we have in the GAMS file, we have to start with this. Then in the GAMS file, the second phase is to declare, make the declarations of the variables, the initializations, the declarations of equations, and the definitions of equation. Then the third stage, you will see that we will have to define the model. We will have to make a solve without a shock. You will understand later on uh, the, uh, the implications of that and why we do that. Then we define the shock, then we make a solve, then we, uh, in fact, we display results uh, coming from uh, the model and the shock. So this is the order that is, in fact, mandatory when you write a program under GAMS. But you, of course, I think, when you design a new model, please start with the model, that is to say, the uh, second phase, okay? So, in fact, it's uh, very useful to start with the um, uh, writing of the equation and the identifications of the variable, that is to say, in fact, the second phase. And when you write the model, you realize that you need some sets, you need some parameters, so you, in fact, understand what is the information that is needed at the beginning of the program. So when you have finished phase two, you can work on phase one, the beginning of the program, and then after that, you can finish with a phase three, which is the definition of the model and the solve. So you are going to see at the end of the video an illustration of what I'm talking about because I will present the GAMS file that uh, is the model that I have programmed under GAMS um, and so all the different phases of this program. Uh, the key rule, once again, is to start with the model. Okay, so that is to say, when you write a new model, you start with the writing of the equations and the identifications of the variables. So concerning this phase, in fact, we have a series of instructions, then uh, a series of operations, uh, and then I will present here the GAMS program. So what you have to write under GAMS to, uh, in fact, uh, complete this uh, second phase. So these instructions, uh, so in the second phase, is to concern first the variables, okay? So you have to declare the variables. So you use, in fact, uh, the instruction variables. This is very simple. And then you have the name of the variable and then a text explaining uh, what, uh, what this variable is. So it's not mandatory to write this text, but I recommend to write it because it will help you to understand what uh, you have in this variable. Uh, then here, so here you have uh, the instruction variables. So it means that GAMS will understand that P is a variable and uh, you have added a text uh, which explain what is P. It's uh, the local price, then access and other variables and you have the small text that explain what is XS. The second uh, part of uh, phase two is concerns uh, equations. So first you have to declare the equation, okay? So uh, you have to use the instruction equation, which explain to GAMS that you will have a certain number of equations. And so the beginning of the instructions after equations, you have the name of the equation. So here, EQ underscore XS, 
uh, is the name of an equation and you have again uh, a small text a short text which explain what is uh, what this equation consists in okay so you you can do it you have to do it for each equation and then you have the definitions of equation of course uh, because in fact you all, until here you have only the name of the equation so you have to gamps has to understand what this equation is and so you reuse the name of the equation which is already declared and you follow the name of the equations by a double dot okay and so gamps will understand that now you are going to define what this equation consists in so this equation is p is equal to a plus b multiplied by xs two remark at, uh, two remarks at this stage which are really important first you do not use in an equation the sign equal to you use equal e equal which means must be equal to so it means that p the left side must be equal to the right side a plus b excess and second remark you have to finish the instruction with a semicolon so let's suppose that we have uh, declared the equation that is to say we have declared the name of the equation so now we can write the model so uh, first equations it is p must be equal to a plus b excess so this is the supply local supply uh, second equation p is equal to c minus d x d which is the local demand uh, third equations this is uh, relations between local price and world price so the gap consists in the ad valorem uh, tariff fourth equations we have uh, the small country assumption which means that uh, the world price remains at a constant level PE0. Fifth equation, which is uh, the definition of uh, the demand for imports, which is the excess of local demand of a local supply. And then the sixth equation, which is uh, an equalization between uh, supply for imports and demand for imports, MS is equal to MD. So once you have uh, written this model, uh, you can first identify uh, endogenous variables. Uh, they are P, XS, XD, PE, MD, and MS. Then you can identify exogenous variables. So these exogenous variables, so these are variables, they can change but they change uh, thanks to uh, decisions of the modeler. So for example, you have T, which is not explained by the model, but which, which, which can change uh, exogenously to the model. That is, it is decided by the, mod the modeler. And then you have PE0, which is a parameter. You can have a change in the world price of rice, uh, and you can see how it affects uh, the equilibrium in this sector in Senegal. And then you have an identification of parameters. They are here A, B, C, and D. So we can give a new illustration of what I have just explained. Once you have uh, written the equation EQ underscore excess double dot so uh, p is equal to a plus b excess so this is the supply function you can deduce from uh, this equation that you need before that to declare a parameter a and then you have also to declare another parameter which is b so concerning the variables uh, so this stage uh, requires a declarations and an initialization. I'm trying to explain this point. So here you've got uh, six variables, endogenous variables, which are P, PE, XD, XS, ND, and MS. Uh, so uh, these are uh, the variables and they, they uh, are declared with the instructions variables. Very simple. 
do not forget that uh, it has to be finished it has to finish with a semicolon um, before that you have to um, declare some parameters that I'm going to call p0, xd0, xs0, pe0, nd0, ms0, that is to say uh, the name of the variables uh, followed by 0. Um, and of course, uh, every time you can add a text in order to understand what you, what you are talking about. And once you have done that, and once you have uh, given a value to these parameters, to p0, xd0, X, xs0, pe0, and so on, you can initialize the variables. So uh, you type p.l is equal to p0, semicolon. So it means that the current value of the variable p is equal to the parameter p0, and you have given a value to p0. So it means that you have given an initial value to the variable p. Same thing for pe, xd, xs, nd, and ms. So you need to give uh, an initial value to these variables. So right now we can uh, think about the beginning of the program once we have defined uh, the equations of the model, the variables of the models, and we have conducted an initialization of uh, the values of uh, the variables. So right now we can work with, uh, of course, uh, the parameters declarations and the data entry. So. This data that we need, they concern local demand, local supply, world price, custom duty, and slopes of supply and demand functions. Okay, uh, you will understand why they are all not all the parameters in uh, a few minutes. So you have to uh, search on uh, internet on uh, statistical handbooks. Um, you have to collect some information about the sector of Senegal, of rice in Senegal uh, in 2016 or 2017 or maybe 2018. So this information, for example, concerns local consumption of rice, local productions of rice, the world price of rice, the custom duty applied by Senegal on its imports, and the slopes of supply and demand functions. So it's very uh, heterogeneous informations because in fact local demand and local supply and world price uh, you can have a look at uh, different websites concerning the rice sector in africa uh, concerning custom duty you have different databases that give you um, the informations on custom duty on each product in each uh, country so for example you've got uh, the International Trade Center website um, and slopes of supply and demand functions. So it measures, in fact, the sensitiveness of supply and demand to prices. So you have, uh, you must have a look at the, the literature on uh, econometric estimations of elasticities, and of course you have to make a very rapid uh, mathematical transformations in order from this elasticity to understand what is the value of these slopes, uh, because the slopes of these demand and supply functions must reflect local elasticities of supply and demand to prices. Once you have done that, you can proceed to the calibrations of the model. So what, uh, what is a calibration? Calibrations, it's uh, something which in fact is maybe the most difficult part of the, of the model. Uh, it's I, I can use the comparison of uh, with mechanics. Of course, when you do some mechanics, when you, for example, uh, design and build uh, an engine, you have to be sure that every piece get into other pieces. Okay, so uh, it means that here you have to be sure that you give value to everything which is used in the model, such that uh, each equation is consistent and the entire model is consistent. So, of course, you have to calculate values for remaining parameters, which do not have values until now. 
but you have to be sure also at the same time that each equation of the model is satisfied. That is to say, the left side of each equation is equal to the right side of the same equation. The difference is nil, zero. That is to say, there is no infeasibility. So infeasibility here is defined as the difference between left side and uh, right side of each equation. Okay, so you have to be sure that initial infeasibility is zero. Okay, how do we do that here? Once you have uh, given a value to local demand of rice, local supply, world price, custom duties, custom duty and slopes of supply and demand functions, what you can type in the GAMS file is calibration. So this is just to explain uh, what is uh, what you are doing here in the program. So the calibrations, you have five instructions uh, given what you have in fact typed before. Uh, MD0 is equal to XD0 and X minus XS0. It is simply because before you have given a value to XD0, local demand, XS0, local supply. So if you take the difference, you will have the demand for imports, initial demand for imports, MD0. Okay, And so it means that once you have typed this instruction, and if you give uh, to each variable an initial value, which is MD0, XD0, and XS0, these equations will be satisfied. Second instruction, this is MS0 is equal to MD0. This is another equation of the model. So you just gave a value to MD0, so you can give a value to MS0. Okay, this is in fact logical, quite consistent. You remember that before that you can you gave a value to PE0, the initial world price, but also T, which is the ad valorem duty. So you can give a value to P0 because in the model you have an equation which is P is equal to PE multiplied by 1 plus T. So you can here type P0 is equal to PE0 multiplied by 1 plus T. And if you give uh, the value P0 and PE0 to the variables P and PE, you will be sure that uh, this equation is satisfied. Uh, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Then you have the demand and supply function. So, in fact, you know you, you already gave value to P0, XD0, and D, which is the slope of the demand function. So, you can uh, use all this information to give value to C. You can write C is equal to P0 plus D multiplied by XD0. So with uh, typing this, you are sure that you give value to C. And also that, in fact, the initial, the equation uh, will be initially satisfied. The equation consisting in the uh, demand function for rice. And then you make the same thing for A and you have in fact, uh, a new parameter which has a value, and you have also this equation of supply functions which is satisfied. So you are sure at the end of the calibration that every parameter has a value, and you are sure also that uh, every equation is satisfied. There is one remark I want to make, but maybe you understood already this uh, point, the fact that you have a specific order in the calibration, because for example here, you give value to P0, then you give value to C. You cannot do, in fact, you cannot start with C, then P0. Why? Because in C, you need to have a value for P0. Okay, so you must start with P0, then C. If you start with C, Okay, then once you will give a new value to P0, in fact, C will be no more equal to P plus DXD. Okay, so your, this equation will uh, no more be uh, satisfied. So be very careful with the order of the calibration. 
because it has to be consistent in order to be sure that at the end of the calibration, uh, every equation is satisfied. So now let's proceed with the, the end of the program. Um, uh, first, we have to deal with the definitions of the model because, of course, we have defined, declare and define uh, the equation, but we didn't define the model itself. So, uh, in fact, we have to explain um, what are the uh, equations, which are the equations which are uh, included in the model. And so this is done with the instruction model, followed by a space, then the name of the model that the modeler chooses. So here I, I chose tariff. Uh, then uh, between two slash, you have to type the name of all the equation separated by a comma, or uh, if all the, the equation that are declared uh, and defined in the, the present file, if uh, they all belong to the model, you can simply just type all. Um, and finally, you have a semicolon. Then what we do is that we make a solve. Okay. And of course, you noticed that there is nothing uh, between the definitions of the model and uh, this first solve. So in fact, we do a first solve just to check that initial infusibility is zero or close to zero. Uh, and so it means that just after the, the instruction model, we type an instruction which is solve tariff. And in fact, we use CNS because it's a solver which is adapted to square system. Um, again, we finish these instructions with the semicolon. And then we implement a shock. So here, uh, the initial tariff is zero and I change it for 20%. So it means that for a tariff of zero, uh, when the variables are initialized uh, on the initial value of each variable, we've got uh, an infallibility which is zero. But right now we should have something different because we have one parameter which has changed from 0 to 0 0.2. This is the import tariff, so 0% to 20%. So we, in, we type t is equal to 0 0.2, and then we ask for a new solve. And of course, we should have an initial infusibility which is different from 0. And uh, we will have the solver that will find a new solution for the endogenous variable. And finally, we have a display of results um, which is simply um, excess uh, display of excess point L dot L. So dot L means that it is the current value of this variable. Of course, you can ask um, GAMS to calculate some parameters like the rate of increase in uh, one variable. But you have, of course, to uh, make explicit uh, statement of that.